This is Women in Linux. Welcome to the Women in Linux podcast, exposing women to information and careers in technology. Thanks for joining Women in Linux with your hosts, Tamika Reed and Dee Parler. Today, we're chatting with Darlene Gilliard-Jones, co-founder and chief community officer of Digital Undivided. Or Darlene, thank you for joining us today. I'm so happy that you was able to do this on a Saturday because <laughs> I know Eric, the, the time constraint was busy for everyone during the week. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Give everyone a background. Um, I met Darlene at, well, actually how I got invited was through Tobias and it was through Blacks and Technology. He had posted, hey, we need some mentors for this hackathon that was going on in Memphis. I said, yes, I can make it. And then the, the his, there's history there. So uh, going to Memphis was a good experience. I know that you took the tour with going to see where, you know, the slave trade route was done and so mm-hmm. forth. And then to being a mentor to uh, those kids and showing them like how to do an MVP. I think that was a, a, a great challenge that weekend. And I think everyone got a chance to kind of really get a chance to see people's personalities and how to deal with different people in such a short amount of time. Like you you had to adjust quickly. So I don't know yeah. how you felt about that weekend, but I think that was a great weekend to, yeah. to, to you know, to highlight like, you know, people really just don't know or or some or people are misinformed. I think that was kind of like what I got out of that weekend. I'm, how mm-hmm. about yourself? Yeah, um, that weekend was really life-changing for me in some ways. You know, the work that we do at Digital Undivided and Big really, you know, um, we're focused on empowering women. And when we empower women, we feel like we're uplifting entire communities because that's what women do. And so dealing with those young people who were all social justice activists in their communities hearing their stories, hearing their challenges, introducing them to innovation as a tool to solve those problems really just was incredible because young people are like sponges. They can absorb and learn quickly, and they did, and they embraced it. Um, They walked away with, I think, something that was, um, that will help them, you know, quite a bit. Um, even in their way of thinking, even if they don't decide to go into technology, but their way of thinking and processing and figuring out solutions. Um, And then just you all, the mentors that came in from across the country, you know, gave your time, you know, the, the compassion that you showed, you know, the enthusiasm. It was really exciting. And I felt like we created this bond that, um, will last a lifetime. I mean, I feel like you, Tamika, are now um, a good friend. And that's not normal, right? No new friends at my age. It's like no new friends, but you definitely impacted me just by the knowledge that you were able to share, not just with those kids, but with my own son who was there as a mentor as well, having gone through All-Star Code and as a computer science major. Um, It was fantastic. It was really special. Um, and and um, we still, you know, are in touch with them and looking at ways to do more of that. So yeah, it was it was a super special weekend. It was special, and thank oh, you for participating. Oh no, thank you, thank you for inviting me. Now mm-hmm. now we know about the hackathon, but can you tell us a little bit about who you are and who you represent in the company? And just a little bit of background about how, you know, you came to be in Atlanta with Digital Undivided. I am the Chief Community Officer for Digital Undivided. I'm also a partner in the organization and one of the founding team members. In Digital Undivided, we use innovation as a tool to foster the economic empowerment and growth of Black and Latina women entrepreneurs. And we started about five years ago with just a conference. I had this awesome background 
of, you know, working in various organizations, women-led organizations um, and publications, and had founded a company called the Gillard Jones Agency, which uh, was, you know, public relations, uh, marketing, and consulting firm, produced major events, and was doing a lot with different clients. One of my clients happened to be Catherine Finney, who was the founder of the Budget Fashionista. And um, Catherine asked me to help her produce a conference, a conference that brought together black and Latina women in technology. Because as a person who had grown up in tech with her father and then starting one of the very first fashion blogs, she um, oftentimes felt alone in the space as a black woman but understood that there were black women in tech, but where were they? She would go to these conferences like South by Southwest in the early days, and it was like two black people, you know, and thousands of others. And so I agreed um, to help produce this conference, and we did, and that was called Focus 100. That was back in October of 2012. We had, at the time, Mayor, now Senator Cory Booker was one of our keynotes who gave of his time and came and presented. And at the time, he was involved in technology um, as part of a startup and brought together over 100 women in tech, uh, black women in tech and Latina women, as well as others. You know, we had, uh, you know, people from places like Techstars and Anderson Horowitz who came and, you know, gave mentorship sessions and we did talks and workshops and things like that. And it was a huge success. From there, in uh, January of 2013, Catherine decided that she wanted to actually start a company where we helped black and Latina women with their companies, giving them the coaching, training, network, and and things that they need um, to build a successful startup. And so we did that. We did a number of um, conferences over the years, the Focus 100 conference, we went around the country to underserved communities and basically said to people, look, you too can start a tech company. All you need is an internet connection. Tell us your idea. Let's work it out. And so we were always about empowering people economically through tech. And the conference, which happened every October, um, the highlight of that conference was really what we called our Focus Fellows Program, where there were a group of women who got the mentorship that they needed over the course of the conference. So the first year was just a weekend. The second year it had grown, expanded out to um, a week. The third year that we did the conference, it was virtually for um, four weeks and then two weeks in New York during the conference. And so that was really where we saw the most impact, where we were you know, giving these women the tools that they needed to grow their companies. And if, in fact, they, for some reason or another, couldn't continue as an entrepreneur, they then fell into the innovation economy by working at companies like Uber and others. And so there was a point at which we felt, okay, so we're doing this work, we're going around the country, we're doing events. That's not really the answer. But we understand that there is obviously something missing when it comes to, you know, black and Latina women having successful companies, raising the money that they need. You know, it seems like it's not, you know, they're not getting what they need. It seems like this, seems like that. But we needed to really quantify what the problem was. And so we then did a research report called Project Diane, named after Diane Nash, who was uh, a leader in the civil rights movement, but who didn't get the recognition that others got, like Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King and, you know, even like Hidden Figures, right, the movie Hidden Figures, you have these women who were doing all the behind-the-scenes work but didn't get the credit um, that they deserved. And so Diane Nash, so Project Diane was named after her. And we looked at the state of black women in tech entrepreneurship in the United States and found um, some startling uh, facts. One, we were only able to, you know, there were only 88 startups, official startups, using the definition by Eric Reese, um, 88 startups that were led uh, by black women. And only a very small percentage, 0.2%, were able to um, raise 
venture money, venture capital, um, over a million dollars. And so we also saw that no, on average, we were only able to raise $36,000, whereas white males who have failed tech startups were raising $1.4 million. So we weren't raising enough money to even fail properly. Um, we understood that from the report, black women were lacking the networks to, you know, the connections that they needed to have successful businesses and raise money. They were lacking the capital and they were lacking the training. And so from that, we decided to start the incubator, where we gave women those three things to help them build their companies. And we chose Atlanta for a number of reasons. One, the population that we serve is here. Black and Latina women are here in Atlanta. Number two, um, the cost of living. So when you want someone to start a company, there's a lot of risk involved in doing that. And to really focus on the company, you have to make it as risk-averse, I guess, as possible. And so being in Atlanta allows people to um, be in an area where the cost of living is, is low, lower than New York. New York is very expensive, which is where we were based. Um, and you can't really work on a company uh, and live and eat at the same time, right? It's very hard to do. For us, for black women, for Latina women, you know, risk, it's its a much bigger risk than for a white dude. We don't necessarily have a parent or someone, the network, right, to give us some money to do this business. And if we screw up, you know, give us more money. If we lose, um, then a lot of times our family loses because we're taking care of folks, right, whether it be our own families or our grandparents or nieces and nephews or whatever, like if we lose, everybody loses. So we're very risk averse. And so we wanted to alleviate that risk by being in a city like Atlanta. And then we did have some local support. The Metro Atlanta Chamber of Commerce has been very supportive of us here, um, uh, and as well as other, you know, individuals. You know, we had done a lot of programming here over the years and just felt like this was, you know, a great location. Um, the airport is one of the biggest in the world. Um, so you can very easily get to and from wherever, you know, New York, Silicon Valley, from Atlanta. And it was and it was the right move for us. Um, and so we came here and opened the big incubator, the big innovation center in downtown Atlanta, and um, and launched the program. So the big incubator really is an extension of uh, the Focus Fellows program that we launched back in twenty in twenty twelve. So you have had time to cultivate one the data and and the network as well to to mm-hmm. bring all everything that you've done uh, over the years forward um and I guess also a um a model you you can say a model like you have a a model that you follow in your expanding that model like you started off with a, a smaller conference and now you just, now it's like you got a 26 week long conference so, mm-hmm. so program, yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's mm-hmm. like it's it's 26 weeks now we just expanded that and we added some twists and some turns so um mm-hmm. so the knowledge is there and the network is there now well, one of the, one of the things that you did uh speak on was um well two things that you did speak on was having the 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 network and I mm-hmm. I talk about this all the time with a, with a lot of people. They're you know they're like you know when it comes to building out your product, like you you have an idea, but then when you look back into your list of friends or people that you know, you don't have anyone to build out your product. So I always mm-hmm. tell, I always encourage people like even if you are gonna start a a tech startup, at least go get some technical knowledge. Um, so mm-hmm. you can at least talk the lingo and understand mm-hmm. so you don't um, end up walking into a situation where you got $10,000 and 
But what you're trying to do only costs two thousand dollars, but you give them eight thousand dollars over because you didn't, you know what I mean? You didn't do yeah. your due yeah. diligence of uh, of tapping into people to talk to or research mm-hmm. or or just didn't know for yourself. You know, understanding that you know a, a lot of people would throw throw money at us at a situation just to get it done, but it may not mm-hmm. necessarily be the right right person or the right concept for that person Mm -hmm. of what they're trying to do and the other thing Mm -hmm. that you tapped on was uh moving in to atlanta and a shout out to atlanta go atl go decatur Mm -hmm. but uh you know (laughs) you know setting that's home that's home that's home uh but setting setting that up where you uh where you can maneuver around the only drawback about Atlanta is you need a car because it's it, it isn't a Philly or Chicago or San Francisco or New York. Um mm-hmm. you know you still you still need to have some type of trans transportation. Um and and but yet and still even with that, even if you did had to have to get a car, you could still maneuver unless the bridge falls on eighty five or something of that nature. Mm-hmm. And, you know. Right. Then, it, then it stops right. the it stops the you know stops your uh, your growth and, and your movement, not your growth. But I mean, those are those are great points because I I I wonder. I was like I was like I wonder. I was like, why they didn't pick like a Philly or maybe even somewhere like a Chicago? But I know I understand mm-hmm. those places probably already have something. Um, in terms of uh, a, a tech space, and when I always look at it, Atlanta, even over the years of moving back, um, the tech space in Atlanta wasn't one. It wasn't where it needed to be for me financially, and then two, yeah. I didn't, I didn't see, uh, I didn't see anyone in tech or doing things that that I was doing in tech. So right. uh, naturally it was always like, okay, if I, I know if I go to Atlanta, I'm going to be in the same situation I was in when I was in, you know, a DC or if I was in New York, like I'm, I'm going to be the only black person in that, in that space to, to maneuver. Mm-hmm. So I, I understand the alienation of it, but I yeah. also un- I but I also under I understand how to deal with it. I guess me, you know, being from Atlanta and being able to travel around, I've been able yeah. to, you know, like, okay, that's gonna happen. It is what it is. What can I get out of this situation so I can keep moving forward? And I think I think another thing too is we as black women and I should say brown, period, uh working on mm-hmm. building our network is something that we have to work on. Like we said earlier, you know, no new friends, but you know, you do need some new friends. <laughs> you do, right? So, so yeah. So, you know, there's a few things that you said. So networking, yes, our network, we definitely have to work on that. Um, and, and so, and so, you know, because of our experience in the industry and particularly Catherine's the founder who, you know, has been involved in tech for a very long time. Our networks are everything to us. So we're here in Atlanta. There is a growing tech ecosystem here. Um, It is very different from other places um, as far as being a true ecosystem, but I think there are a lot of people working to make it um, a bit more connected. Um, but, you know, it's a budding ecosystem. There's a lot going on here. The city supports all of these initiatives. And so I think there's a lot of opportunity here, um, for people, um, similarly to New York, the, you know, even though it's a diverse city, the tech, uh, companies are, you know, very, have very few brown black and brown people right or few black and fewer black and brown people than you think but i think there's progress towards change um as far as us in atlanta we did look at other cities actually and that is part of our expansion um to go into other cities like philly you mentioned philly and that's specifically is on our list we didn't choose chicago because there are things happening there but we are definitely looking at places like Los Angeles. So you have things happening in San Francisco in that area, not so much, you know, in LA. So we've been talking to some folks out there about 
potentially, you know, opening a big innovation center there. So we do want to go into communities like areas of Detroit, Philly, perhaps Newark, New Jersey, um, and expand the center. But, you know, we just have to have certain things in place. And for right now, we're making sure that what we do works is effective and we can just kind of turnkey it and, and get it into other cities. So you mentioned, yes, we did have um, the program was one way when we first started and we've changed it. You know, we're learning just like, you know, anyone who has a startup, you know, you learn, you do your customer discovery, you learn, you figure out what works, what doesn't, you pivot. And that's what we did do with this program. And so it is a 26-week program. We go through different modules. We have three different modules. And what happens a lot with um, people who start businesses, um, particularly women and women of color, we get the website. We do all this stuff. We spend all this money in the beginning, right, because we have this idea and we think that it's great. And we think that that's what people want because we might want it, but we have, like, two friends that want it, right? And you spend all this money in the beginning, but you don't really know who your customer is. You don't know whether or not people are going to pay for that, how much they're going to pay for that, where are they, right? So then sometimes you figure it out too late, right, or you'd never get a big enough market share to really get investors or anything like that. And so for us, you know, the first things first is do you have what it takes to be an entrepreneur and the founder of a tech company? Are you coachable? Do you have hustle? You know what I mean? Can you pivot, right? What kind of person are you? Which I think is different, which I know is different from other incubators and accelerators. They maybe look at the person who came from the Ivy League school. And Project Diane, we saw that most of our, most of the women who had successful startups that who were black um, came from HBCUs or from schools that were not traditionally the schools that you would think, right? Harvard and Yale and Stanford and those kinds of things. They're coming from like Howard, you know, and other schools, Mm -hmm. Um, UPenn, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, do you have what it takes to be an entrepreneur? And if you do, let's look at your idea. Let's fine tune the idea. Let's do that customer discovery and see if you really have people who are interested and want to buy it. That's a long process. And at the end of that, you may realize, you know what, my idea, my idea is shitty. Oh, no, this is not <laughs> right. I need to change. Or at the end, you're like, this life is not for me. This is way harder than I thought. Because I think people want to live creative lives. You know, they see entrepreneurship and, you know, as creative freedom. You know, you have freedom and flexibility, but they don't understand how much work is involved. So, you know, we put these women through um, the customer discovery piece, figuring it out. You know, maybe they move forward into the next module where, you know, growth hacking. They're figuring it out, growing it, um, getting customers. And then in the end is when we talk about intellectual property and forming, actually forming the business and all that kind of stuff. So it's a reverse kind of thing than what people I think are are generally accustomed to. So, yeah. I want to throw in another city for you to look at. It may not be on your radar, but Tampa, St. Pete, particularly St. Pete, but look at those areas and check them out. Cause mm-hmm. I've been looking around for, you know, just, I think they're incubator as well, but they had a program like an entrepreneurship program that lasted like eight weeks and you went to class and you kind of like got your idea off the ground, did your research and then you presented at the end of class. What I Notice it was it was it 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 wasn't any it wasn't any mentors that that were there of color. That's one. Mm-hmm. Two, mm-hmm. there wasn't anyone in there that looked like me that could really um, understand. Like prime example, um, I said, "Hey, you know, you're telling everyone in the class to go out and build their build their product and so forth and so on." Since I'm a techie, I'm like, but you haven't discussed the security behind, you know, them building their product and what they need and so forth and so on. And then he was like, well, you don't worry about that. You hire your your sysadmin or somebody to worry about that. And I said, okay, 
how do how does one know when you are doing this that that sis admin knows exactly what they needed to know like for me I said that had to be as I, I was like I was like you should look at incorporating you know a small piece and talk about you know that not necessarily the architecture but understanding some key words and key things that that person would need so that person when they go out and they're looking for someone they can speak the lingo or at least understand what they're looking for I was like mm -hmm. so so you can't hire somebody to work on your project if you don't even know what you're looking for you know right. so I had those those type of conversations with them and I see that like in a lot of places and in, in a lot of people that you know start their their business and you talk about you know getting a lawyer uh you know trademark this that another like those little pieces or things that need to be discussed but in some places they don't discuss those things at all right and so then you walk right. away and you're like, hey, somebody sends you a a, a letter and you're like, uh, cease and cease, a cease letter? You said mm -hmm. cease and cease? You want me to do what? Who is mm -hmm. this? And so you haven't done all your research, you know, so right. we, we talked we talked about that. You know, one of the things that we definitely encourage is like a co-founder, right? Because you may have one piece of the puzzle, but a co-founder you know, might have the technical side, right? So I think, you know, we definitely encourage, I mean, and it's hard to do things alone, right? So, um, you know, that's one of the things that we encourage, and I think that would help, you know, um, some people, like, they work in this bubble, you know, they're doing this thing, they're grinding it out, and maybe they don't have the inclination to learn that other stuff, but you need to have a partner or a founder or somebody who does. I would agree with that. That's true. You're listening to Women in Linux. So when you're looking to start an incubator, like what if someone wants to start one, like I said, in Macon, Georgia, or say in Jacksonville, what advice or I guess what, uh, what would you tell someone who wants to start an incubator? Would you tell them to start it or would you tell them like, don't, don't do it because you, it's going to wear you out? <laughs> what advice would you give someone that wants to start an incubator? Well, it's definitely going to wear you out, but where's your heart at, right? <laughs> so for us, like we're the first and only incubator dedicated to training and supporting black and Latina women founders. So we're unique in that way. And that's the lane that we stay in. So although, for instance, we did the hackathon with kids, that's something different, right? So we have Digital Undivided, which is the organization, and then we have the technology, which is our nonprofit arm that runs the incubator. Um, and so, you know, we have been doing this, and I don't think anyone knows more about black women, black and brown women in technology than we do as an organization. So you definitely need some experience. I would say you have to have experience actually growing, building, and scaling, and possibly exiting a, a company. You know, there are people who are out here doing or trying to do accelerators or incubators or whatever, but hasn't gone through the process themselves. And I would say that if you don't have that experience, it's a, it could be a bit challenging, right, because you don't really, you can't really relate and understand what they're going through. And I'm talking about someone who maybe has a niche incubator, right, like us. The networks can't say that enough. You have to have a network of people that you can tap into. So, like, I can call on you, Tamika, because you have, you know, experience and expertise in one area and then I can call on someone else who has expertise in another area and you bring everyone together and you have a great pool of resources for you know the the companies that are in the incubator so you definitely have to have a really strong network for us our network is global so it's really helpful to um, you know the women here in Atlanta Atlanta, um, when it comes to investments and things like that, even though we encourage you build your, you know, build your customer base, like 
turn profits and the investments will come, right? Don't focus on that in the beginning. But here in Atlanta, a lot of the investors, traditional folks, invest in um, cyber security, you know, finance, fintech. And so when it comes to having an investor come in to talk to the cohort about investing and what they look for and that sort of thing, we can tap into people like from New York, from Silicon Valley, from the West Coast of Africa, Nigeria. So it's really important that you have to have a network of people. You have to have some experience building a company, and you also want to get local support. So whether that be your chamber of commerce, your mayor's office, local corporations, you have to have some sort of support um, from the community in which you're trying to to serve. Um, and so those, I think, are the three things that I would say are needed to to start an incubator. That sounds like a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. It, sounds it is like a lot. I, it is I a was, lot. I was, I, mean, I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot. It is a lot, but it's, you know, to me, it's worth it. So my background is, you know, fashion, entertainment, um, marketing, you know, that life. And, but doing this work and having been in this space for as long as I've been, it's like feel good work. So there are times where we want to give up because it is very, very challenging but the rewards on the other end are incredible and it feels good. So you have to really be purposeful um, in your work in order to continue because there are lots of challenges and barriers with anything. But this in particular, especially being focused on black and Latina women, has been really, really challenging, but it's so rewarding. It's, it's, it's really incredible. There's one woman who is part of the new cohort um, of the incubator, and she really she had gone through some other programs here um, in Atlanta that are well known, but that didn't really take her where she needed to go. She was stuck. She was stuck in a place, and she has customers. She has a business idea. She has customers, but she was stuck. And there was something more that she needed. And so when she participated in our Start Weekend, which is what we did, and Tamika, you were there, we um, brought everyone together who had applied. Or actually, we vetted the applications and then brought in some women who had applied to be part of the program. And it was a weekend of ideation and mentorship. And people had to come to come to Jesus moments, right? She had a come to Jesus moment. Like, okay, so I've been doing all this stuff. Um I, it, you know, after this weekend, I understand that I can't move forward in the way that I'm, 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 I'm going right now. Definitely not going backwards, but I certainly can't stay in the same place that I'm in. And I've got some thinking to do and some figuring out to do. And she was ready to wipe her slate clean if need be and pivot, which I thought was admirable. And so um, she you know, talked about what she thought was going to happen and what did happen and how her whole life has kind of been like that. She thought she was going to do this, but she ended up doing that, thought she was going to be that, ended up being this, and was always really successful, but it came to this challenging place um, with her with her tech idea. And so, but she was clearly ready to pivot, which, again, is something that, is a characteristic of a good founder, right? You have to be flexible. And so she got accepted into the program, and we, uh, you know, she complimented me on my nail polish. My, <laughs> nail, my toenail polish was white. And I said, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I like your blue. And she said, you know, I always wore red. I've worn red for years. But I decided this week I'm going to do something different. I'm going to change it to blue. And that was like a really powerful moment. You know, she didn't know that I felt that for her, but it just went to show that we had gotten her in a different state of mind. She was in a different state of mind. She was ready to change. And it even reflected in her nail polish. And it's like moments like that, that like, it's like this feel-good moment. Like, damn, this is awesome. 
you know, she's really got something here. She's got what it takes to do this. And she's doing right. it, and I can't wait. I think she's going to be, like, one of the stars of the program. But we'll see. We awesome. Shall see. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm going to start an incubator. I thought about one. I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. I'm not, I don't know if I'm ready for that Pepsi challenge yet. <laughs> I don't know if I'm well, ready. Well, you know, I know, I know you're down in in um in in St. Pete, right? So, you know, hey, maybe it's something, maybe it's something we could work on together, Tamika. You never know. You yeah. know, once we get this expansion plan in place, you know, that could definitely be a city. If you think the city is right for mm-hmm. a place like the Big Innovation Center, then maybe it's something we can um, work together on. Yeah, I I I think there has to be uh, a, a better better options. I can mm-hmm. say that. I can say that, but it also uh, has to has to be a a place where um, people are accepting too. You know, sometimes people are just not ready for that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so uh, yeah. you know, finding that area and that location and the right people to support it, you have to. Mm-hmm. Have to have that. I know Miami is doing their thing. I know. Mm-hmm. Or, I think Orlando has. I know they have a tech scene in Orlando. I'm not sure what it's like for the brown folks in Orlando, um, mm-hmm. in Jacksonville. I, I really don't know what's. I th- I think Jacksonville does have something. I remember seeing something come across my screen for Jacksonville, but I, I don't remember mm-hmm. what it was per se. But um, I think they have something on. But when I look at Tampa. Uh, everything is is pretty much uh, the opposite color, uh, or I wouldn't <laughs> say the opposite color, the the lack of, or you, you know, right. or however you yeah. want to say that. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, that's what I often see. And so, and when you talk about having a business, we tend to get looked at like, oh my God, you're women in Linux or you do Linux or you're in tech. How, you know, what do you do? And the first thing someone always says to me is like, oh, if you went to school and you became a software developer, that's awesome. And I'm like, no, I didn't do that. That's not really what I do. And so the people that are in tech that actually understand when I say what I do, they're like, oh, yeah, you're super smart. I'm like, no, I just read a book. <laughs> that's just what it is. Um, read a so, book. So, yeah. read a book. <laughs> so when you're talking, when we're talking about qualities of the of the applicants, what qualities are you looking for in the mentors? Because that's really important, too, because they're really like an extension and a representation of of, of you as not as just as a as a person, but as a company as well. Like, how what are you looking for from from the mentors? Well, certainly anyone who has built and scaled a company is someone that we would love to have, um, or that we have had as mentors that have been really good. Anyone who's been through the startup experience, um, who can tell these women what they can expect. Um, we also look at people who have expertise in different areas like yourself, um, or like Tobias, who, you know, software engineer who can, when someone has an idea about what they want to create, whether or not it's possible just on the technical side, um, and just people who are going to give honest feedback, you know, a lot of times. We have people of color who go into incubators or accelerators and basically get pats on the head, like, good job, yeah, great. But don't get the honest feedback because maybe the person running the incubator is not a person of color and feels like if they say something, then they're being racist or whatever, right? They may not want to give you the truth. And so we want people who are going to give these women true and honest feedback. but definitely anyone who's kind of been there, done that, we like that. And anyone who has any sort of expertise, whether it be, um, you know, a branding expert who can maybe comment on, you know, the look and feel of the product or service to, you know, engineers who can help on the tech side, 
like that's not really possible or it's best if you do this, this will make it easier. So we look for a range of mentors. Um, We've even had, for instance, companies who were involved with us who were focused on the retail industry, right, like serving retailers somehow. And so having people in that space that we can connect them to um, is important too. So really just it's across the board, you know, we just really want people who are, um, who've been there, done that in yeah. whatever area. And I can honestly say that weekend, it was, uh, it was no holes bar. So anybody that goes through, just be ready. <laughs> yeah. be ready. I mean, but it's, but it's, it's good though. Right. Um, it is good. Cause nobody's going to give you good. flowers every day in life. So you just have to be ready for these, these, uh, this dust, these rocks, you know, that bump <laughs> in the road, <laughs> this boulder coming down in here that your car cannot okay. escape. So <laughs> you just have and to can be you, And can ready. you take that, right? right? Can you, can you deal with that? Some people can't deal with that. Right. And they and 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 so we were during that particular weekend assessing the mentors, but more importantly the potential founders. Like mm-hmm. if someone had a question for you, could you answer it? Were you open to the suggestion? Um, and those things are important because it is a rough, 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 rough road, a mm-hmm. rough road to entrepreneur right. to, to success. You know, and you just have to be willing to do it. And you have to right. hustle and grind all the time. And even though you think, you know, everybody should be all over this, it's not always the case. You've got to do the work. you got to do the work. And a lot of people just aren't ready to do that work. Right. And, 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 and do the work and actually uh, pull out what you need out of that work. Because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, sometimes right. you, you're, you're, you're spending – just, you know, chasing the tail in, you know, just always chasing the tail and not really uh, pulling out what you really need. So, you know, it's an exercise of the mind. And um, me and Dion were talking about this too, is like, you know, building your tech startup and being mentally healthy and also staying yeah. physically healthy. That's uh, yeah. a, a number one, you know, thing for you know, just in building it out itself because they are long hours watching what you eat, you know, mm-hmm. are you meditating? Are you stretching? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? Um, what, you know, what are you consuming? Like what, where can you cut cost at? You know, like, uh, you know, if you do go out to eat and you want something healthy, yeah. does it cost you, you know, $14 for this salad? You know, how much time does it take you to go to the store and get this, you know, X, Y, and Z for that selling and make it at home, you know, like what's, what's your, you know, what's your turnaround time on that meal prep and the whole nine. So, mm-hmm. you know, we, we often talk about that. And so I think with having that mental challenge, having that, that mental balance, I should say, that physical yeah. balance, um, and also to having balance in your network, you know, somebody that can pull you out of the rabbit hole and say, look, you've been at this for two weeks straight. Take a break. Like, yeah. Um, come, you know, I'm, glad, I'm really glad you said that. I'm really glad you brought that up, um, Tamika, just about, you know, taking care of yourself. So one of the things that we did, and also as anybody who's looking to start an incubator, definitely look at all the other ones that are out there, incubators, accelerators. And we did that. We did that research on what other incubators are out there, what accelerators are out there, what are the best practices that we can potentially take to um, – you know, use for our program. And in doing so and going through it with the first cohort, there were things that did work and there were things that didn't work for our community. And so one of the things that is super important is just what you said, having balance and also being a confident founder. You know, white dudes can get up there with a napkin and, like, here's my idea, this is $10 million, like, slam it on the table, and that's it. Whereas we're taking our time, we're trying to be perfect, which is what women do, but particularly women of color. We don't like the risk, so we're doing all this stuff and, you know, not as confident when we're delivering our pitch or when when we're selling the idea to somebody or speaking about, you know, our company. And so we work at 
creating confident founders, confident in your delivery, being um, mentally healthy, uh, you know, taking care of you because it is so important. It's so important and it balances everything out for you. And so it's interesting in that we, you know, are still in the early parts of the second cohort and there were some questions as to why we're doing yoga. And it's like, yeah, because you need to get that together. Let us let us explain this to you again. And the women got it, you know. But it's it's super important um to have that sort of balance uh when you're working in an industry like this. Um it's it's just it's just important. Very, very important. So I'm I'm really glad you brought that up. You're listening to Women in Linux. You were talking about confidence. I saw this clip, um, and I'll send it to you. But basically, it was like two minutes long in this clip. And I forget the lady that, that said this. She was like, she was like, she stated, she's like, confidence is overrated. What she, mm-hmm. what she said was confidence is something that, you know, you, you're good at it because you, you get confidence from doing something over and over and over again. Like, you know, if I go, you know, if I start learning uh, Python and if I keep doing it every single day, I'm going to build, I'm I'm going to, you know, I'm going to become confident that I can do X, Y, and Z tasks. But she was like the number one thing that, uh, that women need to focus on is having courage, the courage to, mm to start the courage to Mm -hmm. actually get in there and actually do the work, you know, do, Mm -hmm. you know, setting up your network, understanding that it's going to be challenges, having the courage to step forward is, is something she said. So I, I looked at that and I was like, I was like, so which one is more important, having confidence or having courage? But I think Mm -hmm. you get, you get the confidence from doing it over and over again, but you got to have the courage to start. You have to have yeah. the, the courage to uh, get in there and actually plant the seeds. You know, like mm-hmm. we sometimes we overplant. Let me say that as as mm-hmm. as black women, when I look across the board, right, and I look I look at us, I was like, we are degree to the gods. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> we are degree to the gods. Like we. We're PhDs, mm-hmm. we're doctors, we're lawyers, we're this, was that, JD, XYZ, cum laude, yeah. you know, <laughs> laude D, laude da. We, we got it all, right? Right. <laughs> right. right, right, right. And it's funny because then we go back and we look at, uh, you know, our friends and so forth and so on. And we're like, man, why are we always the ones that's single? Why are we always the ones that's, and when I say single, uh, not just single in in a relationship piece, but single in entrepreneurship as well too, right? We're yep. always always you know I'm gonna go start is and and do X Y and Z. It's not like we look around and we don't say uh, I'm gonna talk to someone to see if they want to do this with me. Um, yeah. So so we don't do that. We just go we go and start but we never mm-hmm. turn around to like our friend and say, excuse me. And it does not we apply. Don't ask. Yeah. We don't ask. That's, we don't what, ask. No, that, that's what I was getting to. We don't, we don't ask. Um, mm-hmm. this, we, we, we do and we're conditioned to, to do. Um, mm-hmm. so yep. that takes some reconditioning of the mind to say like, instead of me going to do it, why can't we go and do it? And, mm-hmm. And I, 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 in 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 my span of of things, and I talked about this at um, when I came up to Atlanta, and I told uh, the women, I said somebody had said something, and I was like, I was like, why are you asking? And they was like, what do, what do you mean? I was like, you know what? I said this is what my experiences ta- taught me and showed me. When it comes down to uh, a white man, he doesn't ask, can he do something or can he join or can he do X, Y, and Z? He just does it. He doesn't ask. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was mm-hmm. like, so I was like, I was like, so when you talk about doing something or whatever, I was like, you know, it, entering a room or being in the tech field, just do it. Like, you know, mm-hmm. just 
pick the book up, read it, go there and do it. And, and, and don't get me wrong, there are barriers to entry or barriers to growth, but those barriers are going to be there. And, you know, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they are going to be there. So you have to figure out how to A, maneuver or start your own thing. But even when you do start your own thing, you still have barriers. You know, you still have mm-hmm. that barrier. So you got to figure out, like, what's going to be the best thing for you? Like, is it going to be mm-hmm. entre- entre- entrepreneur or whatever? But the key point there was we don't ask. We always we mm-hmm. always get out and go do. And we have a lot of, I think we have a lot of courage and I think we got a lot of confidence. We just don't have a lot mm-hmm. of net, a lot of network to build up where we need to be. So it's something that right. we got to work on, uh, being able to communicate and trusting. Like we, another thing is to find we don't trust. Um, mm-hmm. We don't trust that, that that person is going to do X, Y, and Z. And of course you got to use discernment, but um, I, I don't think we, 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 we trust each other enough. I think. Well, you know, a- we have a lot of deep issues as people of color, right? This country was built on, on, on slavery, racism. And, you know, traditionally if we went into rooms, we, they, it didn't always work out so well for us, right? If we kind of went into places that we, weren't welcome or think we aren't welcome, right? Traditionally, it hasn't worked out for us. And so we just have a long, you know, we have these deep problems that have to be addressed and we have to move past. So in talking about asking, like, yeah, there are some things where you don't need to ask. Just do it. Just do it. You don't have, you don't need permission to start a tech company. All you need is an internet connection or a mobile phone. Like, you don't have to ask for anything, from anybody. Even Mm -hmm. when it comes to investing, you don't even really need that. If you have the customers, the money's going to come, right? So you don't need permission and you don't have to ask for that. But when you do need help, we have to learn how to ask for it. You know, when Digital Undivided, um, we decided to do uh, like a a video. Um, We had hoped that it would become a full-fledged documentary, still need funding for that. But we decided that we were going to do a video to talk about, you know, women in technology. Sort of before Hidden Figures, it was like these women who've been in this space who are, you know, unrecognized and that we're here. We are here. We are in tech. And we did a uh, GoFundMe campaign for it. I really didn't know what to expect. You know, we had hoped to raise $25,000. And we were able to raise the full amount within 48 hours because we asked. And there were people who were like, we've been wanting to help you guys. We wanted to do something for you but didn't know what and were never asked. You never asked us for anything, right? And and so it was a really powerful moment. And Catherine wrote a medium piece which is something I would recommend to your listeners, you know, check out Medium. There's lots of great articles on there, but Catherine has a ton. And one is really talking about the ask, like closed mouths don't get fed, I think is the name of the the story um, or the piece that she wrote. But, you know, you have to ask. You have to ask somebody to be a co-founder with you. You have to ask for help sometimes. And we just Mm -hmm. aren't accustomed to doing that. And so there's a balance there too. Um, Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, Medium is is pretty cool. Um, I don't know how many folks listen or you know look at it, but a lot of great thought pieces uh, were written on there by some really interesting people. Mm-hmm. Um, and Catherine has a whole slew that that we all love to share internally as a team, and and I even share with friends personally. And so, have, after having your first cohort. You know what I know you mentioned before. There's some things you you did the first time, and as you're not doing the second time, what's the number one thing that you learned from the, from the last time until now? Well, with the first cohort, we actually, you know, because we have realized that, um, you know, black women and Latina women lack the networks, the training, and the capital to really scale a company. We, um, you know, some of the partners in Digital Undivided 
um, we started a fund, the Harriet Fund, which is aimed at the Harriet Tubman, and it's to, uh, you know, give seed money to, to the companies. And so we did that, you know, in the first cohort, we invested in those companies. And that's not something that we decided to move forward with because um, we just felt like, you know, the companies needed a bit more training, right, which is why we also expanded the program. So we'll look to invest on the tail end, but that wasn't something that was promised, you know, or or decided up front. Um, But mainly I would say that just not all incubators are the same, and what works for one does not work for others necessarily. And so in certain other incubators, incubators for people who are not of color and particularly women of color, they're not going to care about creating a confident founder or making sure that your mind, body, and spirit is in sync. You know, that's something that they're not going to do, but that's what what we're going to do, right? Mm. So we know that, you know, we, we sort of addressed it the first time, but we really dove in and created a, 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 a major part of the program is that creating this confident founder. Mm -hmm. Um, Also just, you know, starting earlier in the process, not, you know, there there are some companies out here, women who, you know, have founded companies that, you know, they haven't necessarily done some of that early work that needed to happen, that customer discovery. So you have this business, it appears to be doing well, you know, you're getting all these accolades and press, but the numbers don't really add up and it's more of a lifestyle business versus something that's scalable and that can be invested in and exited later, right? So that groundwork that needed to happen, we needed to kind of go back to that and make sure that these women had, you know, done this customer discovery. Mm. You know, you're doing, you, you have to, you have to have a customer. Mm-hmm. You have to have a customer. Like, and you don't, or you don't eat. You, and you, <laughs> right. You have to have a customer. Like, you know, a lot of times you hear, you know, I meet these women all the time, and they're like, oh, my God, I have this amazing idea. All I need is $100,000. And it's like, really? That's all you need? Because that's not true. That's not what you need. Like, you have any customers yet? Like, how many? 50. Really? That's not really, like, no one's going to invest in that. You know, so we just understood that we had to make sure that these women were really doing that foundational work, knowing the customer discovery um, before they really get into all the other stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. And and so with that, when you're looking, you know, at the market, what are you looking for in terms of bringing the women in? Like what type of technologies are you um looking for women to, I, I guess, uh, not be a brush up, but to build on? Like, is it, is it just data? Is it just big data or it's just kind of anything? Well, you know, the women, everybody's got their own idea about what they want to do and people have passion for certain things. And so we just look at the idea and try to help them expand it. So data we know is important, right? Like, Collecting data, having data, like, is 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 great. Um, so when someone has an idea for something, we try to look at how they might incorporate, you know, collecting data or whatever. But really it's about, um, you know, because you, you want to love what it is that you do, right? So, you know, we may want someone to do something in the healthcare space, right? You're a doctor. You want to start a hair app. It's like, okay, why not, like, do something healthcare related, right? So we want that for you, but we can't really want it for you. You have to want it for yourself. So, um, so yeah, we just kind of work with people where they are and just try to expand on the idea and look at, you know, various ways in which it could really become that, you know, company with an exit strategy. Mm-hmm. That's really the goal. It's like, What's your exit strategy? You have this idea. What could potentially be your exit? Like who would potentially buy you? Is that something? Um, You know, but it's it's really frustrating when you do have a doctor who applies for the program and they want to do a hair app. It's like, 
Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, damn it. So I encourage people, like, I just read the book, The Third Wave, by Steve Case, who was one of the founders of AOL, or the founder of AOL. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he talks about the third wave, wave in technology and, you know, it's like healthcare and partnerships and all these things. And so for anyone who's starting out and who's open to it, I would say read that book and just look at what this man who obviously was um, brilliant, you know, to come up with this thing um, mm-hmm. that kind of launched it all for us, um, you know, to see what his thoughts are on the future of tech and what's really going to do well. Right. Right. If you're just open, you know, because I think it makes sense. And then they also put together the Case Foundation and Steve Case and his wife, Jean, who have been amazing supporters of ours, um, put together this this conference called Rise of the Rest. And basically it was looking at cities outside of Boston, New York and Silicon Valley and what's happening in those in tech and innovation in those areas. Mm -hmm. So little places like uh, Buffalo, New York or Atlanta, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. Cincinnati, you know, what's happening out there, because there's innovation in those places as well. Right. I remember when I first got involved with Digital Undivided, took my first trip out to Silicon Valley, and how everyone was talking about, you know, if you want to be in tech, you need to be here. And I'm like, why? Like, it's tech. It's the Internet. I don't get it. Like, I don't understand. Mm-hmm. I would think that you could be anywhere, right? But that was the perception back then of, you know, if you need to, if you want to be in tech and you want to be like, you know, an all-star, you need to be here. When in fact, there's so much going on all around the country and innovation is everywhere. Somebody in, uh, you know, farmland, Nebraska, whatever, is going to have different pain points, you know, and and come up with different ideas than somebody who's based in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So um, I think, you know, so for us, it's like, Whatever you want to do and think is a great idea as an entrepreneur, let us see if you have what it takes to be a successful one, and then let's help you work on your idea. Because the idea is going to change. Oh, yeah. People will change 50 million times to get to that sweet spot. Um, So that's not really, you know, a major factor. It's really just about the person, the individual and what they are capable of doing. Um, awesome. Yeah. Cuz yeah. I know some 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 incubators only focused on like, you know, AI or they're only looking at yeah. you know, like Software they're looking like yeah, or, yeah, it depends, right? You know, so it's it's mm-hmm. like, you know, which, you know, you know, do you go into it? like, you know, like how do you know if if my my if my idea needs AI or it doesn't need AI, you know, like you know mm-hmm, what what is mm-hmm. gonna what are we what are we actually doing with it, you know? So uh, mm-hmm. that's it's just sometimes it can be a little daunting when you're looking for uh, a, an incubator to go into, and so <clears throat> I always encourage uh, people to look at like who started it. You know what? What are they doing? Go look at their Twitter feeds. Go look at yeah. their information that they put out there, and you, you may even go as far as looking at what school they went to and looking at their mm-hmm. credentials and look to see if they are fraud. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, look at the background of, of people. I mean, you know, we all seen the whole Enron situation, and you know. Uh, people mm-hmm. taking people's money and so forth and so on. Even even there was one out last year about this guy that set up this website for online school and he was going to teach you know these students X Y and Z. He charged them like fifteen or sixteen thousand dollars and he set it up and people paid their money and then when it was time for the school to 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 open up on that Monday virtually, he was gone. Mm-hmm. He disappeared. You're not talking about you're not talking about Trump, are you? <laughs> Trump University. That's not Trump University. Yeah, right? uh, uh, no, this was something else. It was that and he disappeared. But he had <laughs> he had he had he had his online establishment, like and he was communicating with them, and they said like right before a couple of days before the school actually got started online, he disappeared. Mm. Like they was like yeah. he disappeared. Nobody was able to track him down. Yeah, so you gotta do your you research. Gotta do your research. 
Because yeah, there's not yeah, you, you, you had a sixteen thousand dollars and you like, wait a minute, what you can get God. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so yeah, just you know, just talking, you know, get on that point, you know, your network has gotta be strong, right? So like with us, like I said, we you know, it's anybody, whatever your idea is, you know, we just looking for black and Latina women who wanna do this. And so you know, when someone had the question, well, my thing is related to the record industry, what sort of context do you have? It's like, okay, so we don't have to, even though we do, because we have these amazing backgrounds and lots of contacts, um, it doesn't have to be about you connecting with somebody in the record industry because they're all going to maybe have the same perspective, right, that you already kind of know because that's what you're doing. Why not get somebody in another area who, or another field who can bring a different, shed some light on, you know, your your thing. So this is great to have a vast network, you know, of people. Um, when you think about the movie Slumdog Millionaire, mm-hmm. I, I think you probably saw that, right? So he, mm-hmm. you know, was on the game show and went back to all of his life experiences to be able to answer these questions. So it's like between ourselves as a group, as an organization, the people that we know and so on and so on, there's a wealth of expertise out there that can help anybody who's black or Latino who wants to build and scale a company. So um, we don't target any specific area, AI or healthcare or, you know, social enterprises. It's whatever you want to bring to the table and just do you have what it takes to to build it. And do you have the customers? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Because without that, it's not a business, right? It's not a business unless you just want to do something like, you know, it depends on where you're trying to go. If you're good with just, you know, having X number of whatever, and then then good, cool. And that's great, right? Mm -hmm. But if you want to scale and get, you know, ultimately walk away with a few billion or million or whatever, you got work to do. Right, right. Yeah, and, yeah. and then I know you mentioned one book. Are are there any other books that you would recommend um, someone to read? And when you're talking yeah, about doing yeah. a business, yeah, for sure. I definitely the Lean Startup by Eric Reese. Um, you know, it talks about how you know how to how to use innovation to create successful businesses, right? Mm-hmm. So the Lean Startup is one that we've asked all the, the, the women in the cohort to read. I think it's really, you know, important. Um, I would also say The Seed of the Soul is a, is a good book um, to read because it's just, you know, we're talking about balancing and life and all that jazz. And, and the 25th um, anniversary edition is, I think the forward is by Oprah and Maya Angelou wrote something, you know, in the beginning of the book. So I would say those books for sure. And then just because it's really funny, I would say I'm judging you by Lovey Ajayi. Okay. Um, she's an online blogger and humorist and now New York Times mm-hmm. bestseller where she, you know, basically is side eyeing and judging everybody, but it's really funny, but it really touches on a lot of different topics and it's just a good uh good release. It could release, mm-hmm. but definitely the lean startup and, and I would say seed of the soul and then medium, although it's not a book, I would just say, check out medium um, right. online and just look at all the great um, thought provoking pieces that are on there. Really good information. Right. Yeah. And I I think I recommended right now I'm reading the givers. And it's a it's a New York Times bestseller as well too. But basically, it talks about philanthropy. People like uh, the Soros, Zuckerberg, um, the Rockefellers, the Gates, Oprah, and how they all came to be and created this uh, giving fund, um, mm. the giving fund. And I think now it's worth like three hundred and twenty-seven billion dollars, mm. but. Right, but they talk about um, how those givers shape and mold policies in cities Mm. and how and what they're investing in and where they're investing their money at. So it's a Mm. good book to try to, you know, understand like, well, why was this? 
policy passed or what are they investing in and who is doing what and what company is that influencing? So those Mm -hmm. type of things are, you know, just, I would recommend that. So, you know, like if you do decide that you want to open up an incubator in a city, know who's investing Mm -hmm. in that city, you know, where that funding is coming from, where you can tap into, if not, you know, just, uh, just, just that, and just understanding how things affect your area in general. So, just being aware that for me mm-hmm. is is really how I look at that book. Yeah. So, I would recommend that book to anybody. Right. Um, and and I la- check it out. Yeah, check it out. And, and uh, yeah. the last question is: Have you all thought about doing a podcast? I know you like to write. Well, have you thought about doing a podcast? Oh, I don't like to write. Now, that's Catherine who likes to write. I don't like to write. <laughs> um, we have. We have thought about doing a podcast. Um, and we understand that podcasts for our community are a big deal. Like, we, are, we as people are into podcasts, which is great. Um, and, yeah, we have thought about it. It's, it's not something that we've been able to do just yet. But it's definitely something that we've talked about and considered and and are looking at doing in the very near future. So yes. Awesome. Yes. I can't wait. I can't, yes. I can't wait to that podcast. That podcast is <laughs> gonna be great. And yeah, uh, and you. the final thing is is this is your shameless plug. This is where you can shout out anybody, your dog, your cat, your husband, your long lost friend. <laughs> any 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 uh any any last minute advice or detail that we might not have covered um you can go and say whatever you want uh about the incubator whatever it is that you want to talk about five four three two one go well shout out i definitely want to shout out my husband mr jones who has been a huge supporter of us and this work and who has been awesome about me spending all this time in Atlanta and creating a second home here. So shout out to him. Um, Definitely want to say that anytime that anybody's in Atlanta and wants to visit us at the Big Innovation Center, it's very cool. We have Oprah wallpaper. We're in downtown Atlanta, right near the MARTA. So you can take the train and don't have to drive. Um, but definitely come see us. We'd love to have people stop by. We do a number of programs outside of the cohort. One in particular is Innovation Thursday, where we do fireside chats with people in innovation. Um, it could be someone like Lavi Ajayi, who we've had there talking about her book. Um, and in July, we'll have the CEO of Ashley Stewart, who took over a few years ago, totally revamped the brand. Um, and is using innovation to make changes and turn Ashley Stewart into a community. So that'll be July 13th. Definitely look for that on Eventbrite on our website, digitalundivided.com. And um, we look forward to seeing you all in Atlanta. And Tamika, thank you so much. Shout out to you, girl, for being awesome. You have to be one of the most awesomest people that I've met in a really long time. I appreciate you and thank you for having me and can't wait to see you again in the A. All day. (laughs) (laughs) Most definitely. Most definitely. We'll uh, we'll have to link up. Um, I actually got to come back up. I actually got to come back up and uh, check some things out and uh, check out my mom. Uh, Shout out to Ann Banks. (laughs) <laughs> uh yeah i gotta bring her down so so she can check it out because she swears she's like i don't know what you do but whatever you do just keep doing it baby. so <laughs> you know you know let me just say that okay so we you know entrepreneurs have a rough sometimes with their family i swear my family for a long time was like so what do you do again and it's like they would always compare me to tommy for martin as if i really didn't have a job <laughs> Trust me, we are working hard out here in these streets, okay? It's like, it's just, you know, when you think about entrepreneurship, like, you know, Madam C.J. Walker, like, we were doing stuff, right? We were really entrepreneurs, and then we just got shut down for so long. It just became this thing. 
But, you know, really it's about being empowered economically, and especially under this new administration. We mm-hmm. have to do for ourselves. And really after that election, I, I was more impassioned about the work that we were doing and just and, and wanted to go harder. So just mm-hmm. everybody, you know, do you, make your money, be an entrepreneur, be an entrepreneur. Sure. Yes, be an entrepreneur for sure. Oh. But that, well, that's our time. I most definitely will contact you. Please uh, send over that information as well. Yep, we'll do. We'll do. We'll do. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Women in Linux podcast. Women in Linux is a 501c3 not-for-profit organization created to get women involved in the field of IT using Linux as a foundation. You can connect with Women in Linux through social media at Women in Linux on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. To join weekly meetups, go to meetups.com forward slash Women in Linux. For more information and to connect with Women in Linux, go to www.womeninlinux.com.